All right, guys, I'm here with Brian, the owner of Audio Element. Last time we did a video here, we were talking about my clear audio concept, which I love, amazing table. But in this video, we're gonna talk about used turntables because I had a used turntable for a long time. I went vintage, I had a Pioneer, you guys know it, I loved it. I got lucky though. There's a lot of things you need to know about used turntables, especially when you're buying one from a thrift shop or a garage sale. So in this video, Brian's gonna impart all of his knowledge about what to do when buying a used turntable. Stick around. You ready? Yeah, absolutely, let's do it. So what we're looking at is an older turntable. It's, I, we'll stay away from brands, but at the end of the day, we were gonna look at uh, specific things to look for, uh, stay away from, and be knowledgeable, because at the end of the day, we need to know what we're getting into. Totally. Um, I wanna make sure that, you know, A, I bought this on eBay, Craigslist, garage sale, it was grandfathers, you know, on and on and on. There's like many ways that you would achieve a turntable like this. So, and it happens all the time for us. Um, I've had these sentimental turntables. We will go the extra mile for somebody on that because I've got many, many years of platform and experience of sentimental turntables. I wanna make sure that we can get somebody taken care of. Sure. Um, but the other side of it too is if you have an expectation of a turntable, know that you pretty much need a right off the gate, a belt and a cartridge. Uh -huh. Unless it's a direct drive. So the cartridge is easy to see if they have them. I mean, you just look down and you can see if a cartridge yeah. exists. But the, the, the deal it exists, you never want to use a used cartridge. It's right. like using used oil in a, in a like a used car. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know the history. Uh, three to five years on a cartridge is really what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not the use. It, it's the exposure to the air. And the oh. cartridges have actually a rubber suspension uh, piece in them. And that will either A, break down, or it'll get solidified and not move. And that can damage your records. And you really okay. need to make sure that, that you uh, stay away from that. Okay, didn't know that, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, truly. Um, and again, it's, 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 it's the expectation. Um, so back, those are just the minimum two belt cartridge right out of the gate. Uh, we'll look at several different turntables uh, along this video of you know what what we found. Some of these tables are basically, and we sad to say, graveyard turntables. Is they actually cost more to repair uh, than they do to buy a new turntable that will outperform this without with its eyes its eyes shut. Wow. Okay. Truly. Um, so this particular turntable. Uh, is looks like a, like a grandparents' turntable. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's an it's an old old table, probably from the mid '60s. There's some good concepts within this turntable. Uh, there's some automatic features, which was one of the things that they were trying to do is convenience and making as opposed to sonic performance. They weren't quite aware it was just what was available. So they're like, okay, great, we have this turntable. We're going to do start, stop, and then several different sizes, mm -hmm. all of that, and how the arm automatically travels across the record and then cues itself up, all that fun stuff. What happens is there's a mechanical mechanism within there that is greased. Okay. And if it's been sitting or not used or the grease is old, it actually will turn into glue, which is really strange, but it okay. does. So Free it solidifies, yeah, exactly. So it solidifies, then you try and use the table and it basically fractures, bends, or distorts the mechanical mechanism inside. Now, if it hasn't been played, no, it doesn't. If it hasn't been played, we could probably bring it back. We'll clean it up. It takes, you know, a couple hours to do that. And, and in that scenario, you think that's worth it? You think it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like the parts are good enough outside of it that you're able to... Yeah, more often than not, as for your turntable, more often than not, the, the table, we can bring it back to life and, and get you up and running. Mm -hmm. um, but but this particular turntable, somebody tried to play it, it, it died. <laughs> it's dead. Parts availability is an issue, and we'll show you that on a couple other turntables. When you get a vintage turntable, an older turntable, consider it like an older car, you will mm -hmm. have to tend to it. Sure. Things will still fail, some, uh, still break down. Which, you know, again, is you have to weigh checks and balances. What's a new table cost versus the performance versus the nostalgia of the normal. Right, right. let's say you restore one of these kind of turntables right here. Like, what? how long is the longevity of life for an older table after you restore it versus unknown. buying a new one? Completely unknown. Okay. Uh, because we just, we, you can't anticipate what's going to happen, what may or may not fail, and it may be fun. And it may work forever and ever, and we'll help support you on and on. I think the interesting thing is that there are opportunities for used tables that seem like they're foobar, mm -hmm. like completely unable to be fixed, that they can be fixed and yeah. they should be brought to a place like this to get fixed. Absolutely. And that's what we want to help support and say, look, no matter what you do, there is a risk when you buy used. If you 
bring it to us. We will be able to tell you what it is. Hopefully with wherever you purchase it from, if they will maybe give you your money back if it's not repairable. Mm -hmm. um, and then some, you know, sometimes we'll work something out. We'll do kind of a pseudo cash flow clunker scenario. Okay. And and it's not that you're bringing in a clunker, but we'll give you a leg up on purchasing a new table or another turntable to help you along your way because maybe we can use that table for parts for somebody down the road, which is why we have the turntable graveyard that we have here. So Matt, I've brought up another turntable. Yeah. Uh, this particular turntable is great. Uh, for the most part, these uh, techniques are all really, really good workhorses. Uh -huh. um, this particular guy has some other issues where parts availability is a problem. Okay. Um, for the model specifically. For the specifically the model, and there are several tables like that. Even the table that we previously had up, uh, there aren't parts available. Uh, some of the manufacturers, techniques is pretty good, but some of the manufacturers, uh, old Sony, things like that, they just don't support the product anymore. Um, we can try and make something, we can try and get really creative, and we've done it before, again, for those sentimental turntables. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it's just so, it's not effective in, in price, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Here's a random question. Is there, a, is there a way that if someone's at a thrift store or garage sale and they see a model of a turntable they don't know, is there a way they can know if the parts are gonna be available? It's it's difficult. There isn't necessarily. Oh yeah, definitely that'll be available. What if they gave you a call? Would you be would you know pretty pretty well? Usually? For the most part, we usually like send us an email and a picture, okay. something like that. We can tell pretty quickly from that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say anything from seventies, eighties era. Just expect that it's probably not going to be available. Um, and if it is available, there's going to be some cost to it. And again, we're happy to help. But this particular one is to fix this this kid. Uh, was just it was better to buy a new table sure and and it, again we'll outperform it and you, you kind of touched on something that I've always heard and wanted to talk about now is that certain eras of turntables tend to have longer life longer longevity like like the 70s is supposed to be like the golden era of like turntables for right. like longevity um, is there a signature uh, you know, not every table says where it's like when it was made and stuff like that. Is there a signature that each like decade like that has that you can kind of tell what the turntable is made? I would say that the best thing you can do is is look at it from a KISS principle. The less features, the more simple uh, the table is. Respect, you know, from you know operational standpoint, all that. Usually, the better it is uh, for reliability, okay. for longevity, everything. Even my most expensive turntable doesn't have any automatic features. Mm -hmm. um, all that, all that stuff is negatively affects how it sounds, sure. which, which is regardless of what this whole video is about. But how the thing operates, how reliable it can be, you know, and then how long it lasts in mm -hmm. life. Everything you can do with a turntable to keep it simple, mm -hmm. reliable, lasts a long time. Awesome. Now, which is all pretty much every new table. Mm -hmm. They're all super simple. So we brought up another turntable. This is a more modern turntable. Uh, it's a great turntable. Mm -hmm. uh, truly, it's awesome. Sonically, everything else. The issue was the client bought this online. Okay. And it's a, he bought it used uh, online. Okay. And the the reputable person was not reputable at all. And this is one of my most common used uh, deals that we have to contend with mm -hmm. and to try and support the customer. And we are very empathetic how we can deal with that. But he literally. For lack of a better word, and I apologize, he got screwed. Yeah. Bought this thing, it was missing stuff, uh, not packed properly, which is critical uh, on this, didn't have original pack packaging. Uh, the counterweight was shipped with it on the arm. Uh, it just, a litany of problems that the thing just obliterated in shipping. What is the actual technical reason as to why the counterweight being shipped is a bad thing? Okay, so here's why. Think about, this is a, a what's called a gimbal style bearing. It's an X and Y axis bearing, mm -hmm. okay? So you have a counterweight. Now that X and Y axis bearing has really small points that contact and move the pivot. Mm -hmm. Now if you have a weight on this thing and your hammer is hitting constantly, it'll actually affect how the bearing works. Yeah, so and when you're I'm hitting this, you're hammering, hammering it like that? Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, the table's trash. That's fine. So, so it, it effectively damaged the bearing, uh, so the thing doesn't travel uh, uh, correctly across right. the plate. Now yes, A, I can fix that. Sure. B, cost. And, you know, does it start to inch up to like buying a new table? It, it does, exactly. So it was like, you know what? I'll tell you what, there are some parts on here that we can use, A, like the platter mm -hmm. for somebody. If somebody takes a thing home, drops it, goes, ah! That's a perfect opportunity for us. I'll tell you what, get it to us. We'll get you a new turntable. The client was really happy and at the end, ended up with a better turntable. In a bad, you know, a bad situation, we we turned to a good situation. So how would they know to bring it in? Like, because if I, 
order the turntable, I didn't know anything about records or turntables, mm -hmm. and it had the counterweight, I'd be like, that's supposed to be on there, and just start playing records. Like, what would what would be the telltale sign? Well, it wouldn't track properly. It would, the NSK will affect that too. There's lots of mm -hmm. other reasons to do that, but it'll travel across the groove and it will skip this track. In sure. that nature. It'll be pretty obvious. Okay. You will hear it if there's a problem, 100%, it's not. Because I feel like the danger that a lot of people who probably watch this channel, getting into turntables, getting into buying a used table, is that sometimes there are issues that aren't necessarily obvious. Like, let's say, you know, people get an all-in-one turntable and they're playing records. Like, it sounds fine, I'm playing the records, and right. I don't see any issue. But the issue is that the arm's not weighted properly, it's weighing heavier on the records, yeah. and you don't realize it's too late. What kind of issues can a used turntable have that might be kind of hidden under the surface? It happens all the time, and that's that's also why you should come into a shop like ours, is sure. we can show you, and it's not we're trying to debunk your table, it's right. you don't know what you don't know. So we can show your, your table, it's working, it's functioning, it's playing something, mm -hmm. wouldn't say music, but <laughs> it's playing, but it should be doing this. Right. And you need to know, like, I'm gonna use a car reference again because sure. I'm, I got a big car background, but it's like, okay, cool, my car has 80 horsepower, great. But your car should have 160 horsepower, and this is a really weak car, but it's like, you're like, yeah, it's going. But then it's like, wait, let me show you what it can actually do. Sure. It's sad because it happens, I've been doing this a really long time and I've seen so many people buy, use, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. And yeah. in either, I've had things where it's been stolen, and we found out because there's a power supply missing, or, you know, it's, you it, on and on and on and on. There's a platter missing, there's yeah. a, and to get the platter, you know, it's just the, the list, of, it goes on and on. Sure. So that's why I say is a newer turntable, if the price is too good to be true, it usually is. Okay. Um, make sure it has all the materials, make sure, obviously, it's from a reputable place. Mm -hmm. um, and and then, be prepared to change the cartridge out, like every time. I, 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 any used car, I don't sell used cartridges. Yeah. Um, because I don't know the background. And so new cartridges, but when you buy a cartridge from us, it's part of the deal. We do it install, we don't charge you extra to do that. And then we set a baseline for your table. Mm -hmm. Done, we know where we're starting from and we can go from there. That's always a really good thing to do. I love, I love, I love deals myself. I love that people can find deals and get into vinyl. It's a great thing. If you have to be responsible, um, but we want to make sure we don't cost them more at the end. Sure, when getting into it, especially when they don't know what they're getting into. Right. Totally. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, Brian, what uh, what the heck is this? What's going on here? Matt, you ignorant slut. <laughs> Are you happy now? <laughs> you got out of your system? Get it out. This is a record changing mechanism. So okay. what this is, is actually Gerard was a really cool, cool turntable. Yeah. You know what? The era is 50s, 60s. It's again, a really old This isn't 2000s? No. Oh, it's a little bit older. Um, this is like one of those clients and again, a grandfather's turntable. Oh. I used to listen. It was a, the nostalgia of the scenario. Sure. But the reality is there's so many issues with this table. And underneath, and we'll show you here shortly, is it's very complex. There's a lot of me uh, mechanical mechs in there that just locked up, froze. The, the thing doesn't turn, the arm doesn't move, on and on and on. But what this is, is this is actually a record stacker and you kind of can change the records. That's what all of this is. And I guess it didn't really catch on because you don't see them on tables anymore. It's, it's about as broke as you can get. Okay. And yeah. So, I mean, this thing looks like a beater. It looks it, like you go to a used car it's dealership not, and it's like. There's a cool factor about this. Like, there's I mean, a cool aesthetic, like, old school factor, but it sure. looks like it's going to be a, a, like a nightmare headache to, like, repair, yeah, right? Yeah, well, well, okay, let's look at this. Let's, let's show the viewers. Check yeah. this out. Um, oh, boy. Pretty complicated, right? I know all this. So it's all Rube Goldberg-y in here. The reason I'm showing you this table is, again, not to be like, hey, I found this table. It would be great if it worked. It just doesn't. But mm -hmm. if you saw how complicated that turntable was or perceptively was inside, and you understand the concepts, the gears, it turns all this and has all these fun features, the more modern turntable, which A, will absolutely annihilate this sonically. Sure. But B, will last so much longer because here's why. A, the it's simpler. Mm -hmm. There's no gears that mess with this. And when the cartridge goes to the end of the groove, you don't have to go diving for it. Just try not to pass out with a martini in your hand and wake up the next day. And We've all been there. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I have a I have a one martini turntable and I have two martini turntable. Uh, two martini turntable. Nice. So, anyway, um, so it, this is Kiss principle. Keep it simple. Um, and. That, that way is A, sonically it's better, uh -huh. B, it will last a lot longer. Okay. This is another thing. We have a belt, we have a sub platter, we have the bearing, and a motor. Yeah. That's it. Switch, job done. I'll even lift it up, I have to be very careful to do this. That's about as simple as it gets. Yeah. But, sonically, it's, it's superb. 
And so a couple that, years of difference between when these are made. Exactly, and you can find these readily used. Yeah. Quite honestly, um, and they're great, and we'll help support you in that fashion too. That's actually one of the you know the things you'll look for are tables like this. A little bit you know, maybe mid nineties. You know, super simple as, as as you can keep it, and then go up from there. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of what I, how I look at it. But at the end of the day, this is a very challenging thing, and we always try and help if we can get it going. Great, Abs absolutely. But that's this is more of those two percent, three percent to get it going. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a uh, two challenge. One aspect about buying a used turntable is where you buy it from. Okay, voltage is actually a big deal. 50 cycle, 60 cycle here in the US. Uh, we need to make sure we've had this happen where somebody bought a table in the UK. Oh, well, we'll just put, you know, we'll change the voltage. Oh, but the, I didn't think about that. The speed doesn't run at the same mm -hmm. speed. The belt's different, or sorry, pulley's different. Okay. Pulley size is different. So the table will run at, at a different speed. So that's so one if thing. If you buy from a UK retailer and you ship it to the US, mm -hmm. You're gonna deal with voltage issues no matter what. Yeah, yeah, because it's gonna be it runs at a different speed. Even okay. if you drop the voltage down, the the frequency of the the pulley and the, huh. the motor is different. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's interesting. No, it's totally different. So, it, it, again, it's back to those oh, too good to be true, and oh yeah, the guy shipped it over. Uh -huh. I, that's happened a lot too. So I actually will have clients. I have clients all over the world. I have clients that have you know moved to the UK, Germany, wherever, wherever they're, they've gone, um, and we will change the motor out and get with the manufacturer so they can take the table back or if they come back here and then we will actually set the table up for yeah, US purposes. Mm -hmm. And that happens yeah. quite often. So mm -hmm. uh, that is that is a big, big thing we run into as well. Fair enough. Well, I guess the, the <laughs> gist of it from what I'm gathering is that you find a used turntable, you like it, it looks good, it has a mm -hmm. cartridge, it has a belt, uh, it has a tone arm. You bring it to an audio shop. You go to yes. your local, and if you're in California, obviously Audio Element is the shop to go to, just hands down. But you go to a local audio shop that knows what they're doing and you have 100%. to have them look at it. Yes, 100%. And in that way, even before you use it, you wanna know what the base, set a baseline. Mm -hmm. And then you build from there. And then you know what you have. And you, and you can enjoy it. And I really hope that it works for everybody. You're like, man, I got the deal of the century. I love it because it gets you into playing vinyl and, the, and to bridge that gap and do the, the path of least resistance from uh -huh. a better word, that's, that's what we like. So when people are finding turntables at, let's say, a thrift store or Goodwill or something like that, mm -hmm. what are some of the brands that you think people should look out for based on, you know, reliability, parts availability, or maybe ones that are like good turntables but they don't have great parts availability? So primarily tables from the 80s and early 90s, okay. um, usually made overseas. Uh, with you can see it very easily, a, a, a complex platform of um, direct drive, speed control, automatic features. Those are the ones I try and encourage to stay away, uh, away from. Um, I mean, this particular manufacturer has made tables for, you know, since the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, and they've always stuck, stuck with this KISS principle. Um, so, uh, you know, tables of this caliber, great. Uh, but yeah, what as I said, is that those tables, 80s to early 90s, stay away from um, because again, there aren't parts available. They're, unfortunately, the manufacturer doesn't support that product mm -hmm. uh, anymore, and/or they're not even you know around anymore. And that's when uh, vinyl was kind of on the way out for that time period where exactly. CDs were taking over. Perfect so. sound forever, right? Yeah, I don't want to say who that is, but <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I may or may not be biased, but I you know I listen to all formats of music. Sure. The reality is, is you know, for me, my favorite is is analog. I, I love listening to vinyl. Me too. So Matt, what I want to get into is there is a very big following of uh, lesser expensive turntables than like say what we sell. Mm -hmm. And we've set up a baseline of something that's quality, lasts a long time, and, and you know, doesn't really break. Um, there are a lot, you know, sub 200 kind of turntables that they are throwaway, uh -huh. and that's like a disposable really, razor. Yeah, I, exactly. Versus and, like a like a straight razor. And a that kills me for one. It's like <laughs> it's just it's you know filling up landfills and doing it's just awful. So can you fix those tables? I mean, is it even worth it to try when they break? There are minimal things we can fix on them, uh -huh. but again, at the end of the day, you will very uh, quickly add up to buying a new turntable that'll last you years and years and years that will actually sonically outperform that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's again, you have to weigh what you're going to do. Right. It's like um, you buy five all in ones versus one really good turntable over the course of how much are you spending? You know? Exactly. Exactly. But the reality is, is keep it simple. How easy is it to use? That's mm -hmm. another major factor. Okay. You, know, you want to keep it as simple as possible. There's a little lock mech. There's a Q mech. 
you bring it over and a switch. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, sometimes it'll be, you know, you'll have a, a thing for changing speed if you want to do 33 or 45, but keep it simple. The table, if it's easy to use, a five-year-old could use it, you could use it. I am a five-year-old. <laughs> That's what you want to focus on. And all the questions about sonic performance, uh, pitch stability, all of that, come, come to us or go to a reputable dealer ask the questions and learn about it and that's okay and at the end of the day if you just want to play vinyl get it get it simple get it right buy it right and and you know get, get it set up and away you go there shouldn't be any other difficulty other than that so fair enough so another thing i wanted to bring up is what is your intended purpose of the used turntable sure which is a big one because it's like oh i didn't even think about that until right now Mine's so, for purely Instagram photos and no playing music. Perfect. So you basically want a Fiero with a Ferrari bodywork on it. Yes. Got please. It. That's yeah. All right. Um, so here's the thing. These tables will play music. Great. What's the intended purpose? The intended purpose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what we have here is a DJ turntable. Mm -hmm. Now the DJ turntable is a different than a playback turntable. So the biggest issue I have with this particular turntable is if you're using it primarily for playback, mm -hmm. the this is the spindle to pivot of the tone arm, the geometry of no matter what I do to set up this cartridge, it'll never be in the right spot. Right. So what we have is, is the tools that we have is a bunch of mathematical equations of, hey, this cartridge needs to be in this spot and assuming different points along the record. Mm -hmm. This guy is just, it's short. It's, it's like a T-Rex, basically. <laughs> T-Rex arm I, I, All right. Exactly. So for music playback at its ultimate, ultimate performance, this is just not an ideal scenario. Right. And, and we can get this running and it will play music, but if that's your primary focus and you find this used and you only want to use it for music playback, it's not really an ideal thing. There are things you want to stay with. But if it's a, this is an instrument though, if you want to use it to mix, do all sorts of fun DJ stuff, perfect. Go for it, and we can help you along the way with cartridges and you know set it up to the best of its capability. But that's this happens more often than not too, because of like oh this is a guitar center purchase or whatever. Mm -hmm. so, cool. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Sorry for you DJs out there. All right, Brian, thank you so much. My pleasure. This is awesome. I always love it. coming to Audio Element. If you guys watched this video and you liked it, please make sure you like it and leave a comment saying either what your best experience or worst experience with a used turntable is or anything that you think that we left out. No matter where you are, if you have questions about audio, these are the guys to hit up. All their links will be in the description, so make sure you follow them on social media. And if you have any questions, Brian, or one of his awesome staff members, will know what to do. If you're in the Southern California area and you need an audio shop, I cannot recommend Audio Element more highly than I do. Please check them out. They're awesome guys. They know what they're doing and they will fix your turntable or save one that you find at a Goodwill. Thank you again. If you like this video, please subscribe to Too Many Records. More soon. Take it easy. Thank you.